And now, Friday Night Fever with Mike Ludlam. Good evening, everyone. The Michigan Tech Huskies are the top seed in the first round of the WCHA playoffs. Mel Pearson's 13th ranked club entertains the Nanooks of Alaska. And Jamie Phillips had to be on top of his game early, stopping the two-on-one break from the shot of Taylor Munson. He had 20 saves. Eight and a half minutes in, the puck is going to dance around. The next thing you know, oh, Joel Lesperance is there for the 14th goal of his season. Malcolm Goolcliffe Watson, the assists. Tyler Morley tied the score at one, but Dylan Stamen's going to get a deflection right to his stick and puts that one in at 13-29, 2-1 Tech after one. To the second, Jake Lucini, water bottle, his seventh of the year from Max Fallis and Matt Roy, 3-1 at 4-05. And it doesn't take long for the Huskies to get another one. Mr. Lesperance will get his second of the night. Tyler Hayden in back, Rister, yes. Alex Gillies, Cliff Watson, and C.J. Ike did the rest of the damage. Michigan Tech goes on to win game one of the best of three series by the score of 7-1. to one. I think we played a good game, uh, full 60 minutes for the most part. There was a couple minutes maybe we were a little off our game, but for the most part I think we stuck to it and played a good, good whole 60-minute game. We want to go somewhere, and they just happen to be a team in our way. So our, our team is dialed in. They're focused. Um, you know, they know what it takes, and uh, we'll be ready to play tomorrow. We, we understand that this is a series. I, I know they're going to come out hard. Um, they're probably pretty upset with themselves. Um, just, uh, yeah, and for us, we just, yeah, come out hard, work hard, and um, just play well. All seven Tech goals were at even strength. Game two tomorrow night begins at 7-0-7. On the WCHA playoff scoreboard, NMU, two goals in the third period, one from Dominic Shine, one from Shane Sooth that tied the game at two. But on the power play, Kyle Shemp put Ferris State ahead for good. Bulldogs win three to two. And game two is also tomorrow night down in Big Rapids. Elsewhere on the scoreboard, Lake Superior State had a tie with Minnesota State at two, but the Mavericks score the last three to win five to two. Bemidji State, oh, gets the road victory over Bowling Green 3-1. Women's College Hockey, the D2 Nationals down in Kalamazoo. NMU defeats Westchester, Pennsylvania 4-0. The Wildcats will be in the semifinals on Saturday. State Girls Under-19 Hockey Tournament, Marquette, Marquette M. Bank, an 8-0 win over Manistique. That's taking place in Alpena. Over in Livonia, the State Midget Hockey Tournament, the Munising Islanders making their debut, and Brock Smith gets a hat trick as the Islanders defeat Westland 7-3. High School Hockey Division Three Semi-Final Hancock and the White Sweaters. One state title. Their opponent, Cranbrook, 17 state titles. Will it matter? Jack Fenton shoots in the second period, and Luke Raudio gets the rebound and puts it home. And the Hancock Bulldogs have a 1-0 lead. Less than four and a half minutes later, Hancock has trouble clearing the zone. C.J. Regula intercepts the pass, makes a move, and another move on Dawson Carroll. That ties the game at 15-02. The momentum appeared to have switched. Third period. Four checking provides another opportunity for the Cranes, but Blake Johnson is stoned by Dawson Carroll. Teammates say thank you for having our backs. 33 saves for Carroll to overtime. Dylan Pavola puts one on net. Freshman, Alex Nordstrom. Oh, that's a Copper Country goal. Alex plays for Hancock. Dad Steve of Jeffers grad. Mom Myra, a Calumet grad. Winner, winner, chicken dinner at 651. Bulldogs 2-1. to one. Hancock meets Grand Rapids Catholic Central in the final tomorrow at 2 o'clock. The fifth-ranked Cougars rallied to edge Chelsea 3-2 in overtime in the other semifinal. And when we come back, plenty of very interesting and unexpected boys high school basketball district finals. Boys high school district basketball finals will start with, yes, a rivalry in Class C. Ishpeming, who already upset Nagani earlier in the week, takes on the home Westwood Patriots. We're going to jump right to the fourth quarter of this one because everybody was getting excited. Patriots lead by three for Ishpeming. Luke Cool, you know. Luke Cool, you yes, and the foul. He did miss the free throw, but that would not be a big deal for the Hematites because Thomas Finnegan would turn around and score off the glass. Hematites up 41-40, Finnegan had 16. Next, Luke Gray to Connor Hanlon for three, bang. 45-43, red, white, and blue, but Finnegan tied the game at 45 with three and a half minutes to go. 
Then Andrew Manseling, the handoff, the Hanlon. High arcing shot over Ozzy Corp. He poured in 28th. Westwood up two. Under 20 seconds, Thomas Finnegan fouled and lands on his head. He was groggy. He had to go sit on the bench. Derek Mahoski checked in and barely missed both free throws off the back of the iron. Then the scramble. Cool you. No. Hishpaming's trying to tie the score down too. Mahoski. No. And the next thing you know, the rebound is gathered in by Dylan Schultz. And the Patriots eventually make a couple of free throws and they win their first district in more than a decade, 51 to 47. It means everything. It's been 13 years, at least since 2003, to get the district championship. We were working hard all season for this, all season. This means Westwood at 10 and 12 will play Calumet 13 and 8 in the first game of the Class C Regional Monday night at Escanaba High School. Now, who will play in the second game of that regional? Well, we'll answer that right now by going to Dickinson County. Norway fans loud in white taking on Carney Nato, and that's Hunter Eichhorn. In golf, that's four. In basketball, that's three. And the Wolves are off to a very good start. Then Justin Ernest takes it to the hoop and puts it in. 5-2 Carney Nato early. Knights would have a response. Heck, it was even eight to two. Bryce Kelly for three. Yes. Then Connor Ortman will turn and fire. And that one's good. He had 13 points. Knights within six. Then Plant. Bryce Plant would put that one home. Even though Norway only led by one at the half or after three quarters, the Knights get the district title 48 to 40. And let us see who they play. They will play Boyne City. Boyne, the Ramblers defeated East Jordan in a big way tonight, 62-33. So technically, the Class C Regional in Escanaba is almost all Cinderella's. Next Monday should be very interesting. Let's go to Class B. Kingsford, end of the third quarter. Oh, that's Chris Roll. Just putting that one home to give the Flivers a one-point lead going into the fourth. Adam Noldy says, nice shot, Chris. Hunter Hass will slice through the lane and score for the Maroons. He had 25. The fourth quarter will go back and forth. Nick Smith powers it to the basket and good. Back the other way for the Maroons. It's Mr. Noldy off glass. Yes, the GNC player of the year uh, four, made it within four. He had 22, but Chris Roll takes care of business and the home court underdog wins this one by the count of 70 to 64. Yes, more fans pouring onto the court after the game. And there is your district trophy for Coach Dan Olkinen. Now on the scoreboard, Sault Ste. Marie defeated Grayling 42-37. So it will be Sault Ste. Marie at 11 and 12 against Kingsford 10 and 12 in the regional semifinal Monday. And that game really is in Sault Ste. Marie. By the way, all the teams in the UP Big Five pool at the end of the regular season have been eliminated in the districts, including honorable mention Marquette. Let's go to Class D, Lakeland and Hubble, the Chassel Panthers. Everybody knows everybody by now because they play in the same conference. Lakes inside early, Lucas Klein up and good. He finished with 21 points, Lakes up 6-2. But don't tell that to Lars Davatilla because Lars was hitting early and often from the outside. Nice form for the left-hander. He hit four consecutive threes. The Lakes lead was down to one. To the third, Blake Dupe to Arthur Lyons. And Arthur says, oh, if you give me a couple of inches, I'll make that shot. He does. Davatilla would score again for the Panthers, but the night would belong to the Lakes. They get the 10-point victory, 58 to 48. Let's go to St. Nicholas. Merry Christmas, everybody. Mid-Peninsula against Big Bay to knock. Second quarter, James Casey fighting his way inside. Floats that one home. More from Mr. Casey. He's had a pretty good season for the Black Bears. That off-balance three-pointer. Yes, sir. The Wolverines, though, keep the lead, and they would try to add to it. Terry Brower, and he's just going to line that one up. Knocks it down. Terry had 20 on the night. Damian Richmond will knock it down, a jumper. He had 21. Terry Brower is going to score again, and it's the first district title for the Orange and White in 20 years. Wolverines win this one 54 to 36. 
On the D scoreboard, Forest Park just gets by you and Trout Creek 46 to 42. So Forest Park and Mid Peninsula will be the second game of the doubleheader Monday at Nagani. North Dickinson, cruise past, or er, North Central, cruise past North Dickinson 75 45. So North Central and Lakeland and Hubble will be the first game at Nagani on Monday. Also in Class D, Rudyard at 7 and 15 is a district champion, downing Newberry 45-39. Pickford is 15 and 7, defeating Brimley 66 to 41. Those two teams will be in the other district and will take on Lower Peninsula opponents. Don't forget the benefit hockey game for Tim McIntosh tomorrow at Lakeview Arena at 3 o'clock. Plenty of former Marquette Redmond and Marquette electricians. Great silent auction. Have a great weekend, everyone.